Hi, welcome back to another weekly GMBN Tech Show. Coming up on this week's show, we check out Greg Minard's weird dropouts on his bike. There's a new giant glory and some more cool World Cup tech, not to mention all the great stuff from you guys. Okay, so straight into news, and firstly, a lot of cool stuff going on at the recent World Cup. There was XCO and downhill, of course, at Andorra. And you spotted something quite cool on the Saracen bikes, actually. Yeah, lifted potentially straight from an old Kona Stinky. Saracen. <laughs> That's and a low, low blow. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, that's the highest compliment a man can give. <laughs> the Saracen are running what is a really cool um, brake isolator, mm. I suppose. It looks really well finished. They've obviously been at it with, um, with a polish Can I just clear something up quickly? The one that's on the old Kona Stinky, uh, the dope system, yeah. that certainly wasn't that clean looking. It Nothing wasn't. like this that you spotted, because this, <laughs> this thing, jokes aside, does look amazing. The dope system looked like a bit of old Gerda with some bearings in it. Yeah, like. Heath Robinson <laughs> style. <Yeah. laughs> but no, it looks incredible. Um, I mean, I don't know how... There are so many design characteristics that they're looking for something particular, and it's kind of you know, people have settled on a number. But for me, I personally find that how much um, rise or anti-rise you have in terms of the, the brake setup mm -hmm. really is a personal preference. I actually like my bike to squat under braking. Yeah. Because when I'm riding steep stuff, it will it will keep the head angle as, as it wants to be. That makes sense, yeah. If, if you get a bike with a lot of anti-rise, what happens is under that shifting of weight, the suspension actually wants to extend. Yeah. Which, it, it, I know, it kind of, it keeps the butt, I don't know, I mean, it's, they're, like they're like you say, I don't think there's a right or wrong. I no. think it's a preference. And certainly in the case of the course at Andorra, it looks so rough yeah. uh, in places that I guess you want to sort of uh, isolate your braking as much as possible mm -hmm. to get the suspension to do as much as possible. Yeah. Um, it was working for Danny Hart. I thought he had a pretty yes. amazing run. I, I thought he was going to get podium. A bit yeah. gutted for him, to be honest. I really yeah. want to see him up there again. I think he sneaked in in fifth, no? Yeah. But I mean, like, as oh. a, a one, two, three podium. Oh, okay. I, know I know you get four and five, but like podium really. Podium, it's three, podium. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, it was a great race. And I think that it's really cool to see Saracen, much like, you know, with Santa Cruz, which we're going to get onto later, yeah. actually having to be able to pull in the resources and and, and go off that rider feedback to yeah. give the riders something they want in a really well finished package. Do you know, um, the, the bikes actually are fantastic these days mm. as well. The pricing is really good, and then you're getting a lot of tech and they're developing stuff constantly. Mm. Can't be a like, bad brand to follow. And not the only one running custom stuff on the World Cup. Greg Minar was obviously spotted with those sort of chainstay, uh, well, I guess the dropouts to lengthen his chainstay. Yeah. And uh, he had quite a long back end on that bike anyway, so I believe he's riding the double XL, which is over 450. Mm. And you said he, they go up another 20 mil or something. Yeah, I think the, what I read was they have to go up at least 20 mil to be able to have enough room for enough material there to yeah. get them strong enough. Um, but yeah, it looks, looks quite neat. It also, the further the wheel, away, the wheel is away, the more it adds to the travel of the of the system. Yeah, so they had to, uh, to reconfigure the suspension. Yeah, yeah. they had to put a different link in there. Yeah, so it's quite quite an undertaking. But that's a lot of work, isn't it? Just to eke really out is. a bit more. But um, the effect, in case you haven't figured this out at home, the effect of having the longer chain stay is basically adding more grip to the front end of the bike. You think there's always like an opposing reaction of what you do with geometry. And as we've seen, bikes getting longer and longer in the front center. And if you keep the back end short, it's not actually a good thing. You need to balance that out to return your body weight back towards the middle of the bike. And Greg, of course, with in more recent times, now he's finally stepped up to a bike that fits him, um, is now sort of uh, fine tuning every element of that. Mm. I think it's really interesting. I think it is. So, although, like Jonesy said, it's like, is that the sort of thing that you would play with in mid season as a racer? I think, I think it is. I think, personally, I, I think if we compare, you know, to another sport, say Formula One, mm -hmm. they're constantly doing aerodynamic changes, engine upgrades, you know, this sort of stuff. They always talk yeah. about, you know, getting to Europe for the first European but race. Do you think that they'll have tested that behind the scenes and then on race day, they might be like, actually, let's run with that? I think there's probably an element of that. I mean, you hear sometimes about, I think it was a couple of years ago, Red Bull only had one wing. Yeah. They tested in the simulator and the numbers said it was faster without much driver feedback. I think it was then um, Sebastian Vettel crashed and they took Oh, so they had two. They took off Mark Webber's car and put it on Sebastian Vettel's ah, car. No way. And yeah. it was a big, you know. <laughs> but I think that, I, you know, I've got, I've gotten bikes before and thought, oh, this is really, really good. Made some small changes and think this immediately feels better. I think actually when you find the upgrade is quite arbitrary. I wouldn't do it on a Saturday night, but he's probably had this a week or two before World Cup. Yeah. You know, you can get a fair amount of riding. And you look at um, 
uh, Theo, I'm gonna say his name on the South African, Theo Ergles, Erglison, I can't remember his name, but anyway, he actually got sponsored by Commencal and received his bike the day before Leo Gang World Cup. Wow. After being on YT. Yeah. So I mean, that's a big change. Yeah, for sure. Just yeah. fine tuning. Completely new bike, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. you know, you're, you're, you're a big guy. You like 29ers. Yeah. We seem to have been moving away now from the trend of super short chainstays. Yeah. I remember maybe four or five years ago, like when the Process 153 came out, everyone was, they couldn't get their chainstays short enough. Yeah. How, how do you feel? Do you like? Longer. Longer? Always longer, yeah. Well, opt, is it an optimal amount or? Um, I, don't, I guess it depends on, on how yeah, long the front end is. Like on my new proof is about 445, I think, mm -hmm. on that, and that works. It's just a really long bike. It's a 515 reach, I think it is. Um, but it doesn't feel especially long. It just feels balanced. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't feel long. It shouldn't feel short. It should just feel right for the bike. Yeah. Um, and there is no right or wrong either. It's got to feel right for you the way you ride and right for the bike that you're riding. Uh, but you're right, some brands definitely got carried away with, oh, let's make it as yeah. short as possible. Yeah. You know, like, you just get erratic handling yes. with that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I find, especially on a hardtail, it's got a super short back end. It might feel nice for doing manuals and stuff, but if you're riding some sort of skitty terrain, mm -hmm. it wants to grip and oh, grip yeah. and throw you, throw you around yeah. too much. If you have a longer back end, it can actually, it handles a bit more like a full suspension bike. Yeah. You can drift it a little bit, it yeah. tracks better. I, I used to find on having a bike bikes a really short rear ends doing steep climbs. Mm -hmm. You kind of, you get used to it and you acclimatize to it, but then you get on a bike that's even 10, 15 mil longer. Oh yeah. And Big it's difference. just like the front end's glued. It doesn't yeah, matter yeah. what the head angle's doing. Yeah. And there's such a, you know, everyone's looking for that magical number head angle. Yeah. And I think sometimes it's it's just part of a package, you know? 100%, yeah. You can't Not just always, stick a yeah. fancy head angle on the front of a bike and expect it to ride well. Mm. Yeah, it's all, um, um, maybe we should do a bit of a geometry special in, uh, well, in yeah. a future ask, because it is an interesting subject. Uh, if anyone wants to know anything about mountain bike geometry, uh, past or present, or where it might go, um, ask some questions in the comments below. Uh, put them as Ask GMBN Tech, and we'll pick those up in a later ask. Also, there's actually an important thing that I need to address oh, yeah. that came out in this week's ask. I'm a terrible person. You're I'm a terrible going person. straight to the inner circles of hell because okay. I forgot to do the Nuke Proof Scout tyres. 27.5 plus, 29. We said we were going to do it. Oh, we didn't I do it. I forgot. Oh, yeah, I'm so we did sorry. completely forget. We'll maybe do it. I'll maybe do it today, even and get it out on the um, Instagram. Series. Well, Blake's bike is hanging up right there with a set of two point fours in it, and I yeah. see there's some twenty seven plus tires there. Yeah, we'll see if we can um, sort that out for you. Yeah, yeah. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I have won the lottery. I'm going to cheat myself. You won the lottery. I didn't mention this actually, but yes, I did at the weekend. Wow. Had a quite a successful yeah. weekend, and I want to buy a World Cup winning bike. Yeah. What are my options, Daddy? Well, right now there's clearly one option. Uh, this is it on screen. It's the limited edition version of Nina Scherzer's race bike. Um, have a look at this in its all its glory. Yeah. It's available as a frame set. Um, it's a carbon, it's called the HMX carbon frame. It's got a RockShox SID Ultimate RLC 3 air fork on there. Um, I mean, look at the thing. It's even got custom Nino brake levers with red calipers on there. Uh, as far as race bikes go, it's pretty special. It's pretty special. I believe the complete bike here with Nino spec uh, weighs 20.3 pounds. Well, that's probably, pretty, that's probably light enough. But which is I'm fairly <laughs> light. Um, and, and he obviously, he piloted that bike um, to victory at Andorra. Although, mind you, I don't know if you saw the state of him for the finishing line, man, that looked like a serious effort. Yeah. It's not often you see Nino like absolutely hanging at the finish line. But it makes you think if he didn't have such cutting edge technology as disposable, you had a kilo to that bike, yeah. it was that close, do you know what I mean? Yeah, that would have hurt. Watts to power, it all, it all counts, um, well, watts to weight, sorry. Yeah, we, we haven't got any uh, a, a date on this yet, it's available anytime now, we haven't got a price on it, unfortunately, there isn't one, um, but it's available in four sizes, small through to extra large, uh, approximate frame weight for size medium, 1,849 grams, uh, or 4.8 pounds, and that's including the rear shock on there. Um, pretty impressive stuff if mm. you want a World Cup spec winning bike, and I think this looks amazing in the kind of like the nude sort of finish. Yeah, it's looks great. pretty good. Okay, now it's time to take a look at Bike Cave. This is where you keep your bikes, this is where you keep them clean, hopefully. You lock them up, keep them safe. Uh, if you've got a cool bike cave, or if you've got an uncool bike cave, take some photos and send them in to us. We'd love to see them. Uh, the link is on the bottom of the screen right there. Uh, first up this week, we've got one from John in Cumbria. Uh, he's got a Voodoo Bizango bike. Um, and this okay. is his place where he fix, brake, and build all manner of things and stuff. His church, his oh. happy place. Nice. I like that, his happy place. Um, <laughs> and that looks like a very swanky new sort of tool chest on his roll cab there. Yeah, um, nice. nice little GMI oh, yeah, spotted that straight off the, very straight nice. off the bat. 
Um, yeah, and you've got a huge woodworking bench down mm. the back there, so it looks like you're partial to a bit of carpentry and stuff. He's even got Jeremy and Bottle in Blake's favourite colour there. Just spotted nice. that. Wow, and look at this one. So this is from Lee in Nelson Bay, Australia. So he's got his ute with a trailer on the back. Yeah, that's, that's a trick set up straight away. Yeah. Australians yeah. love their utes, eh? Hey? Same with Kiwis. Do you know what? They look really good, though, don't they? They do look good. Sam, uh, Sam Reynolds used to have one. He did, yeah. It was a massive it was engine thing, wasn't it? Gnarly. Because <laughs> it's got no weight on the back. It's just like... You go through back tyres, I think, didn't you? <laughs> um, so he just got back into mountain biking after 18 years. Photos are from a recent 1,500km uh, trip. Uh, his friend did down to Threadbow. The trailer oh, wow. holds three to five bikes, toolbox, workbench, vice, fridge for the beers, and a solar system to keep the fridge and all the light running. No way. Have a look at this. This is amazing. So the lid folds up, sort of transformer style. Love it. Oh. Checker plate on the inside there with the three bikes. It's so tidy. That is actually really cool. It's really, really cool. You could probably sleep in that at a push as well. I've definitely slept in worse things. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Like a bus shelter. Oh, flee, a dream of a bus shelter. <laughs> no, that looks so good. Oh, yeah, all the social fridge. I didn't notice the uh, the cabinets down the back. And yeah, the and it's actually, if you look wow. on the roof where they have it opened up, it seems to have yeah. like strobe lighting. Well, not strobe lighting, but you know what I mean. Um, so, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. And work, work on it. Uh, there's those solar panels on the roof as well. Oh, it looks awesome. Thanks for sending out with Lindley. Really cool to see. Uh, next up's from Joel in the Chilton Hills, South Oxfordshire. Yeah, I like this one. Now, this looks really tidy. Is, does it look like that every day? Be honest, or did you, did you just put the elbow grease in for the photo? Because that is... To, to be fair, <laughs> I'm doing a bike cave tour at my place. I, I, I did a bit of elbow grease last night because I opened the drawers, so I was like, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I need, I need to order some stuff. Um, I think I was talking to you about it the other day. You know, you get a phone that you can cut the holes out of, mm. but it's a specific type of three-layered phone. Yes, yeah, so you cut your tools yeah. to fit in. Yeah, and I haven't found the right supply yet, so I need to order some of that. Nice. Um, because now I've, I've, I've actually taken out about twenty duplicate tools out of the chest I just don't need. Yeah, stuff that you just end up with over the years. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, got headset spanners in there. When did I last ever need a headset spanner? Nineteen ninety-eight or something. <laughs> yeah. So they're gone. But yeah, back to your uh, bike cave, looking very cool. Carpet down there, more tire hooks at the back. Plenty yeah. of storage, got all your muck off and all your disc brake cleaner and stuff on the back shelf. Good old GT85. See, that stuff reminds me of my childhood. That's like um, old spice for your bike. It's got a real distinct smell. Going to a bike shop and you'd be like, oh, I feel yeah. like I'm at home. It's like the same, so, you know, going to a record shop. So I always used to do a lot of record shopping when I was young and it's the same as the smell of vinyl. Yeah. It's a very distinct it's a smell. Distinctive smell. And you yeah. smell it and yeah. it just takes you back straight away. Yeah, totally. And it's a very clean, abnormally clean, in fact, Joel. No, it is a very It's really good. nice and your white looks oh. immaculate, which is good. Cool bikes. Yeah, good to they're see. Super cool bikes, actually. Yeah, they're really very good. Uh, something I particularly like on these is, uh, I don't know if you've seen them up close, it's got little caps over the bearings. Yes. You can put grease in to put it in, so it should water oh. find its way in and it gets its way out again. I didn't actually know that. It's like a little blanking cap that goes on the mm. top. Just quite cool, just to stop the end of yeah, the barriers totally. suffering. So always, so, yeah, good for wet weather. Yeah, and great. They always seem to be really good spec. Nice. They've also got like a gator system yes, on top I have here. Seen that. Yeah. Mm. yeah, nice little feature. Nice. Wow, some really good entries. Solid this week. Um, please continue to take some photos of your bike case. Honestly, it doesn't matter what you have. It's just about a place that's cool that you store your bike. It could be under the stairs, wherever it is. Keep them coming in. We love them. So now it is time for Rewind, which is where we cast our eyes back into mountain biking's history and see some of your um, submissions for the cool tech you still have at home. Maybe you're still riding it, maybe it's just hanging on the wall, pride in place, but we do love to see them. So if you have an uploader below, um, please get them in. And yeah, we, we do our best to go through them. Sadly, we can't put them all on the show, but even if they don't make it, we still they're actually one of like a real hot talking point around the office, eh? Absolutely love them, yeah. Yeah, they are great. I think our social team, we're going to start putting more of them on our social media as well, so make sure you keep us updated with your names and where you're from and all that sort of cool stuff, and we'll get you featured. Um, first up's from Patrick in Sweden. Now, I love the title of straight away. Cannondale Beast of the East, 1998. Mm. That takes me back to basically wanting to be Martin Ashton, and it's yeah. really cool actually getting to work with him now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it is bloody cool. The Beast of the East was, it wasn't a trials bike, but it was designed for the east coast of America, where it was quite rocky, where that bike was intended to be used. It had a really high bottom bracket, there and then because that, it lent itself to trials perfectly. There was me thinking it was more Norfolk. <laughs> but, you know, just to show my naivety <laughs> again. <laughs> Uh, so this just says, my old beast tricked out with WTV saddle, Rooks seat post. That's a blast from the past. Bash guard and more. HS11 Magura brakes on there. Pretty cool to see. 
Um, due to the very high bottom bracket, you will almost never get pedal strikes. The new bottom bracket on my new bike is six centimeters oh, lower. Nice. Yeah, it shows you how high <laughs> yeah, yeah. this one was. Um, yeah, yeah, so the Coda stem, Azonic bars from back in the day. Yeah, and here we go, the Beast of the East. Yeah, the Norfolk, the Norfolk, Norfolk Nightmare. Shredder. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And there you go. Well, you can even see how high the BB is. The BB is above the wheel axles. Mm. It's on 26 as well. Yeah, we're 26, yeah. and this is with a massive bash guard, and it's still like towering off the ground. Yeah. But great example of the bike. It looks in amazing condition. Um, thanks, Patrick, for sending that in. Nice little trip down memory lane there. Oh, look at this. Ooh. So this is from David okay. in Birmingham. Um, well, what can you say? It's a Lobo. Yeah. So it's a Lobo in one piece, in fact. Um, so this is an alloy one, they did the STS Lobo, which was the thermoplastic, and the alloy one. Um, in fact, I think the alloys lasted a bit better than the thermoplastic ones. That's when, I suppose, shocks hadn't converged over a pull or a push shock. Yeah. You know? So I, I, I can't work out why GT used that design. So it's a four bar linkage on the rear end, but using that pull shock. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. to be fair, the back end tracked the ground really well, but as far as I know, there were lots of issues with those shocks. Mm. Boxer 151s, I think, the classic. So that's interesting. So the Rock Shock's rear disc brake, so it was cable operated hydraulic uh, caliper on there. That was actually made by Amp Research, um, who made my favorite bike of all time, the Amp Research B2. Oh, sick. So it was, uh, I think uh, the Rock Shock's bought the design or they licensed it or whatever. It was Amp that designed that, which is quite cool. It's interesting as well to see that mount coming straight off the axle. Yeah. Similar to what we talked about with Saracen. Yeah. You know, these design theories have been around for yeah, a long, and, long time. And, yeah, and you've exactly got that going on the yeah. inside. Um, the only the only two things I would question about that bike is the saddle. I know we all had daft saddles back in the day, but that really is quite awful, isn't it? Am I also right in thinking there's no front brake on that bike? Uh, yes. But, yeah, you know, you Maybe if you use it as a pub bike or something, I don't know. But... Ah, that's fine. Don't jump bike. Don't, don't jump. need a front brake, do you? Yeah, it'd be it's right. good. Um, the bars as well. X light bars on there. Very cool the fact that they're X light bars and you still got a set, but um not sure about the design of them. Kind of looks like a, a low rise BMX four piece bar. Yeah, yeah, potentially, yeah. Face for radio sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. Um and an original oh, wow. build kit as well. Okay. The shock. Yeah, so you can see that trunnion mount and they yeah. go straight into the shock. Yeah, very cool. Great to sit in one piece. Mm. Um if anyone's got anything vintage, um Preferably anything before the year 2000, that's what we're really looking for. Um, but if it's exceptionally cool and it's quite old, we'd love to see it either way. Uh, it could be bikes, it could be kit, it could be helmets, it could be old photos of yourselves at races or events you've been to. Literally anything you've got, send it in. Now, a bit of a change in the show this week. Um, I don't know if you guys remember, but way back, we gave away that Santa Cruz on like the bike build project. Oh, yeah. We went to yes. Evo from Slovakia. You seem like a cool guy. Evo is such a dude. He's such a mountain man. He's literally he's out all the time climbing and skiing and mountain biking now. Um, he just sent me an email the other day, and I'm just going to throw up some, a little video clip and some photos of some of the insane stuff. We did a five-hour hiker bike for like three hours riding back down. Um, Dolly, hope you're having a great time enjoying riding. Uh, really been enjoying Retro Week, love the, the content. I'm writing because I promised you some photos and videos of my adventures with the bike. Recently we had our first epic ride. Five hour hiker bike uphill, three hours to get back to the car, mostly descending. Um, that's what you're seeing on screen, and I think you'll agree, the location looks absolutely looks stunning. Um, the bike gives me a new reason to travel. I've already been on a trip to north of Czech Republic and to Poland for some epic trail riding. Also, a nice update about the jerseys you gave me. You gave me two, and I can't really wear two at the same time, so I gave one to my best friend. He was so impressed, uh, and he was actually so inspired by my Nomad that he decided to buy a Canyon Spectral from the savings for a new car. <laughs> Those are priorities, and that's so cool. So you've got another friend on a mountain bike, so you have adventures, and this is him here, I guess. Yeah, that's so cool. That is just amazing. I'm glad the bike went to such a great home, eh? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, it was definitely the right choice. I mean, that was uh, all of you fantastic guys that actually voted for Evo to win that. Um, and he also says at the end, um, say thanks to Blake and whoever came up with the idea to make a video on how to carry a mountain bike. Uh, it's helped me an awful lot because I carried my bike for a long time and I carried it wrong all of my life. Now my arms <laughs> don't hurt anymore. It's a game changer. Um, PPS, any chance on that Slovakia trip? Ooh, mm. there's a thought. Maybe we need to go and visit Evo. Yeah. What do you guys reckon? Should we go and shred with Evo? Now, something passed through our office about, well, about two weeks ago now, yeah. that was super cool tech, 
but it was kind of top secret prototype. And so we could film it then, but we couldn't actually release it. And then we had to send it back. So when we could release it, we couldn't film it. <laughs> so made this just a little kind of details on some really cool tech from Ceramic Speed. Some reducing friction, yeah. yeah. Giving you more watts, apparently. Now, us mountain bikers like to chit chat about various things. Wheel size, what is the best amount of travel, and how to pronounce the word Arkansas. But what do our spandex loving roadie cousins talk about? Well, they'll often discuss something called a what. Now, what is a what, I hear you wondering? Well, counterintuitively, it's nothing to do with e-bikes and everything to do with how much power you can produce. I've had power meters in the past, but to be honest, the readings just depress me to my very core. So now I steer clear and I measure my rides by something called enjoyment. Now the E factor hasn't actually saturated roadie circles yet. You may have read headlines that makes it sound like it has, but they're actually referring to something entirely different and even discourageable on the roadie scene. Ceramic Speed, who are considered gods amongst men in the roadie circle when it comes to delivering what's in your pocket and free speed on the road are stepping into the mountain biking sector. Now, free speed might not be the turn of phrase, as historically, they've been both absolutely fantastic and unapologetically premium. But if you want to get more power for the same amount of effort, thanks to increasing the efficiency of your drivetrain, then this is where these larger jockey wheels come into play. Now, they do this by increasing the size of these jockey wheels, which means your chain snakes its way through the jockey cage at a more relaxed and efficient angle. It doesn't have to bind up as it goes through a tight circle. Now, is this a marginal gain? Well, most definitely. They even reduce the friction further with these very fancy ceramic bearings. Now, I think this is a lovely piece of kit and maybe for racing, if I was so inclined, I could be persuaded to part with my hard earned cash but I do think it's pretty remarkable. This SRAM wireless mech <laughs> and these ceramic speed jockey wheels, just in my hand, I'm holding something that's very, very valuable. And I would just be perhaps a little bit nervous about hitting it on a rock. Maybe not for the wider market, but do you feel like it's got its place in racing? So tech like that might be reserved for people that, well, have the 500 euros or thereabouts. Yes, it's it pretty. Requires. Although, although there is, there's definitely a user for it. You know, I'm yeah, thinking like totally. your, your Nino level yeah. user. I'm sure you could benefit from a, some extra watts and yeah, totally. And you know, it, it's probably not something I would personally buy, but I'm not some I'm not someone that gets you know offended by somebody wanting to buy it. I think it's good that there's an option and ceramic speed are actually doing some really cool stuff I mean, that's, with that's actually changing the about, trains. With, it's all about the speed and reduced yeah. friction. I think there's definitely a lot of serious XC star riders that would be interested in that. Yeah. I mean, some of the stuff they buy doesn't make sense to me, but it does to them. So. <laughs> yeah, totally. Hey -ho. What's in your pocket, even if there's no money left? <laughs> so that's kind of it from us, really, for what was actually a really cool show. I really like the bits, especially with all the new World Cup tech. Yeah, that's great. I know. Uh, it was great to hear from Evo as well. So thanks yeah. for keeping in touch. Yeah. Now, if um, if you ever get the curiosity gets the better of you, better of you and you think, I've always wanted to take a word as original with me riding. Just one. <laughs> What's the best way to store it? Um, it sounds like maybe it's a problem just that I have, um, but I think it's it, it's a plight of many, really. So I made a video for multi-tool hacks. It's a bit of fun, quite lighthearted, and I hope you enjoy it. Well, click down there for that one. Yeah, and if you want to check out Martin's random tandem, Much I did a bike check with that. Um, I urge you to watch it and check his videos out. That's down there, links through to those as well. The bike really is a bit of a masterpiece considering it's a prototype at this stage. Uh, there's lots more tech videos on that to come. Um, as always, don't forget to give us a huge thumbs up here at GMBN Tech. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so and share it around. Let everyone know us, about us. Cheers, guys. Cheers. <laughs>